Hi everyone! Tonight's video is on the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. You should have watched the introduction to photosynthesis video before listening to this video. So we can see here in front of us a chloroplast and the two phases of photosynthesis are depicted. The light-dependent reactions, which occur in the thylakoid membranes, are shown on the left-hand side. And this is where light and water will go into the thylakoid membrane and produce ATP and electrons being held onto by a molecule called NADPH. Oxygen is also produced in this process as a waste product. In the light independent or Calvin cycle reactions, the electrons and ATP made in the light dependent reactions are used to convert CO2 into an organic sugar, but this is not actually glucose that is produced. That's a very important point to know. Another video on this channel covers the light independent or Calvin cycle reactions. This video is going to focus on the details of the light dependent reactions. So let's look up close at a thylakoid membrane to see what's going on in the light dependent reactions. So you have pictured here the outer and inner membrane of the chloroplast, a very small intermembrane space. This would be the stroma. And then this phospholipid bilayer pictured here is the thylakoid membrane. The inside space there is the thylakoid lumen. Embedded in the thylakoid membrane are a variety of complexes called photosystems. And this is where our chlorophyll, which is our photosynthetic pigment, is located. So when light hits one of these photosystems that is embedded in the, the thylakoid membrane, that's going to hit a photosynthetic pigment, a chlorophyll, and it's going to excite that molecule. That excitement, that energy, gets passed from chlorophyll to chlorophyll until it ultimately hits a pair of chlorophyll in the middle of the photosystem called a special pair. The energy from light then removes an electron from that special pair of chlorophylls, and the electron is placed in an electron transport chain. This special pair of, of chlorophyll is now missing an electron. The electron was placed in an electron transport chain. It doesn't come back to the chlorophyll. That electron is replaced by splitting water. This photosystem, using the energy from the sun, is able to split water into oxygen, hydrogen ion, and then the electron is removed from water and placed back into that chlorophyll, replacing the missing electron. This is where oxygen is produced in photosynthesis. And in addition, two hydrogen ions are released into the thylakoid lumen. The electron is again placed into an electron transport chain. This should look very familiar to you if you have covered cellular respiration. It is getting passed from protein complex to protein complex, each of which is more electronegative than the previous. The energy used by passing the electrons down the electron transport chain is used to pump hydrogens into the lumen of the thylakoid. And now this process seems very similar to the mitochondria, but the direction of pumping is opposite, and that's important to note. In the mitochondria, hydrogens are pumped out of the inner space into the intermembrane space. In the chloroplast, hydrogens are pumped from the stroma into the lumen, so it's a different direction. So the electron keeps moving down its electron transport chain, and ultimately it's going to end up back into a chlorophyll in another photosystem. This photosystem is then going to get also hit with light. That's going to excite the photosynthetic pigments, and that's going to take that electron from chlorophyll again and put it up into an electron acceptor. This time, the electron is not going to go into an electron transport chain, but it is placed on a molecule which is capable of giving it to an electron holder called NADP+. NADP+, is very similar to NAD+, which you are familiar with from the mitochondria. It simply has an extra phosphate. It is a molecule that's capable of accepting electrons and holding two electrons. So when NADP picks up two electrons, it becomes NADPH. This thylakoid membrane now, it's very important to realize, is not permeable to hydrogen ions. And we have a hydrogen gradient that's been established here by two processes. First of all, the splitting of water at this photosystem produces two hydrogen ions. In addition, 
the electron moving through the electron transport chain allows for hydrogens to be pumped in, creating even more of a hydrogen gradient. The hydrogens cannot leave this thylakoid membrane. They can only pass through an enzyme called an ATP synthase, which is embedded in the thylakoid membrane. When the hydrogens move through this ATP synthase, they of course make this ATP synthase spin, which gives the energy to add a phosphate back to ADP to make ATP. So using the energy from the sun, we have removed an electron from water and replaced that electron from water into an electron holder called NADPH. And we have also formed a hydrogen gradient, which allowed the thylakoid membrane to make ATP. So that's how the light reactions use the energy from sunlight to produce electrons being held to, onto by NADPH and ATP. I have to point out some very unfortunate naming at this point. There are two photosystems involved in this process. The first photosystem, the one that splits water, is called photosystem two. The second photosystem, the one that bumps the electrons up high enough so that they can be picked up by NADPH, is called photosystem one. So the first photosystem used is photosystem two. The second photosystem used is photosystem one. This naming is historical. This photosystem here was the first photosystem discovered. So it's been called photosystem one. And by the time the second photosystem was discovered, this one's name had stuck. So what you need to remember, unfortunately, is that photosystem two is the first one in the process and photosystem two is the second one. So if we look at the chloroplast as a whole now, we have the thylakoid membrane with the light reactions. And you can see that the electrons placed on NADPH is actually in the stroma. Even though the light reactions occur in the thylakoid membrane, the NADP picks up the electron on the stroma side of the light dependent reactions. And the ATP synthase actually makes ATP on the stroma side of the thylakoid membrane. This is actually very convenient because the second phase of photosynthesis, the Calvin cycle or light independent reactions occurs in the stroma. So the electrons and the ATP needed to make this cycle occur are already in the correct location. This cycle will be covered in the next video on this YouTube channel. So from tonight's video, you should know where the light reactions occur specifically. Chloroplast is not a good answer. You should know what goes in and what comes out of the light reactions. You should understand the role of sunlight. You should know what is the role of water in photosynthesis. You should understand how and where water is split and where oxygen is produced. And you should understand the role of the hydrogen gradient. So that's all for tonight.